Well, let, let's talk about uh, some of those things that that were were never seen, maybe in in uh, Gears of War One. Can you give us an example of, of things that you wanted to do, but you decided, eh, let's throw it out? Sure. I mean, when it started out, we had this cool idea, like we were playing Battlefield and said, this was fun, but what if we had vehicle fighting in the future? Wouldn't that be awesome? Like a battlefield in space, you know? Of course, you know, years later, they made Battlefield 2142, right? It's happened. But at the time, that was our initial idea. Lots of, lots of vehicles, big open, uh, multiplayer only. And uh, Gears isn't that at all, right? It turned into the story-based shooter where it's you fighting through city streets. You know, it looks like almost a destroyed Europe look. Uh, with very little vehicle gameplay. It's a totally different game. But where we started was that, and it just wasn't coming together. It wasn't fun. We kept trying new things. We say, oh, this, this chainsaw is badass. we got to have more of that. You know, and that's, that's how it works. And so um, can you give us a little, a little, little peek into... <clears throat> Can you give us a little peek into what we might see? Something that the gamers might be excited about for Gears of War 2? Wow, stuff you might see. Well, I just showed a demo here. It's the only time we've run this demo in Europe. Probably the only time we will run it. Which we weren't allowed to film. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, but I can tell you a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it's... This is the second level of our game, and one of the things that we didn't really accomplish as much as I wanted in the first game was that feeling of all of humanity is fighting for its life. And so this second level is everything we've got, every vehicle, every chopper, we're all going, we're going to take out the locusts, we're going to go to them instead of sitting on defense, slowly losing all our cities. Um, so this one you got to see big crowds, you know, hundreds of locusts pouring over the hills, you're machine gunning them down, uh, big vehicle on boss combat, stuff like that. Um, I think we showed... Uh, their new pistol in there, sort of a burst pistol. We showed uh, finishing moves, which was nice. You pick somebody up off the ground and was able you know, break his neck and throw him off the ship. But most importantly, you can hold on to him and use him as a shield while you're shooting other dudes. The meat shield. Yeah, the meat shield. And it was so cool when you, you have one of those and the boomer hits you with a big explosive shot and it just powders every... Oh, it's so cool. It's, we have a lot of fun, dude. <laughs> You sound like you have a lot of fun. Actually, that was that leads me to my next question. Um, do you personally play when you have time? Obviously, you're president, but when you when you have time, do you personally play games yourself? And if so, which ones are your favorites? Oh God, I play games all the time. Um, you know, I try to play all of our licensees games, uh, and that's getting harder and harder because we've been really successful. So um, you know, Mass Effect looks great. I just started up Army of Two. Um, uh, Bioshock was one of our licensees. Great friggin' game. A little bit of World of Warcraft. You know, every now and then. And, uh, yeah, I know it's a, it's like an addiction. You can't break it. Um, but yeah, I play I play PlayStation games. I'm playing Drake's Fortune at work right now. It's awesome. It's really cool and then playing a bunch of xbox stuff at home so yeah i play everything it's my job xbox, xbox live screen name in case anybody wants to challenge you no i'm not throwing that out every time i do that i get five thousand friend invites so which is cool it's nice to be popular but i suck so much sometimes online it's probably better not to <laughs> and um where do you see the future of epic games going and where do you see the future of Unreal technology going? Gotcha. Well, I mean, we've got... It's going to be a big console jump next time. Uh, you know, going from this to PlayStation 4 or whatever they end up calling it. There's sort of two ways things can go. We're either going to have bigger graphics GPUs, bigger graphics machines, or we're going to go in a totally different direction and have like 50 or 60 or 100 processors. So crazy multiprocessing. And if we do that, it's going to change everything. All, you know, every bit of the graphics pipeline and games engines is going to be thrown out and we're going to try something new. So it's either going to be a nice big jump or it's going to be a completely crazy God knows what's going to happen jump. And so we're all kind of nervous. You know, next year or so we'll figure it out. But we'll be ready. I'm sure you will. Um, as far as uh, you've been quoted as, as <laughs> you've been quoted uh, sometime last last month, April, as uh, being, let's say, not too happy with the we okay. and that you weren't interested in going backwards but interested in going forward 
Do you want to clarify that statement or put something on top of it? Yeah, sure. I mean, the quote was that I said the Wii is a virus, um, which w what I meant was that it it's virally transmitting, right? That you play it and your friends come to your house and play it and go, oh my God, that's really fun. I want to play Wii Sports at home and they go buy it. And the disappointment for me has been that there's not games that are keeping me playing with it. So I shelved it after two months, but I've already transmitted it to three friends and then they go shelve it after two months and there's not, I'm waiting for that game to get me back. But my Xbox is what's hot at home, not my Wii. Um, you know, in terms of technology, yeah, for us, we're, we're, we're always thinking about the next generation. We're building Unreal Engine 4. We have been for two years worrying about next-gen consoles. And the Wii really wasn't a console jump, right? Um, they made another Wii. Uh, sorry, they made another GameCube with a really cool controller. But it's, it's a GameCube. And there's no way it can run Unreal Engine 3 well or Crisis well or anything else. And I'm a graphics guy. You know, I like the pretty pictures. And the Wii's never going to be able to compete for me against an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation. Um, but I'll play Wii Tennis with my family, you know. So there are, there are absolutely, positively no plans to maybe make a, uh, a let's say, a watered-down game for the Wii? We never would, um, because it doesn't make sense. I want to be making for the next generation, because... I have to have my engine ready so that everybody else can use it, right? Um, but uh, we've had Unreal Engine 2 games running. Uh, Red Steel was a launch title on Wii, and that used our engine tech, but it was Unreal Engine 2, not the current generation. And uh, for PC, do you, do you feel that uh, the PC allows, allows uh, the Unreal technology to really push itself to the limit? Oh, sure. I mean, a high-end PC is going to be stronger than any console, because those were made a couple years ago, right? But, you know, how much are you paying for a high-end PC? I mean, $3,000 or something like that. So, yeah, um, we're proud of our ability to run on low-end machines and high-end PCs and kind of do well in both spaces, because you can't sell PC games if, if you can only run them on the top 1% of machines, right? So you have to have a good range. Uh, but it's, it's getting more and more challenging. The range difference between high-end and low-end PC is bigger and bigger all the time. So it's getting tough. So, is there something, something that, okay, for this type of event, do you do you think it's uh, do you think there's any any importance for the gamers, or is this strictly for the people that are on the technic uh, the technical side? No, I mean, what, that's what's cool about this event, right, is that there's game fans and game developers. In the U.S., you never have that. It's either all professionals talking about rendering technology, or it's all fans, and they just want to play the games and see. So it's really cool to have an audience of both here. And that's actually why I split my talk into two pieces. So I'm doing a developer-focused talk this afternoon that'll be boring as hell to anyone who's a game fan. It's about statistics gathering in the engine, right? It's, if you're a developer, you love statistics gathering, but these guys, fans don't care. But I thought the game demo, maybe both folks would like like to see so now nah, it's really cool hey thanks for your time and uh really appreciate it look forward to seeing more things coming from epic games thanks. all right dr mike caps